A new study says there's a 70% chance that a recession will occur in the next six months. There's a 70% chance that a recession will hit in the next six months, according to this new research from the MIT Sloan School of Management and State Street Associates. The researchers created an index comprised of four factors and then used the Mahalanobis distance, a measure initially used to analyze human skulls, to determine how current market conditions compared to prior recessions. The global economy is already in the worst distress that we have seen since 2008, and it appears that the global slowdown is actually picking up pace as we have entered 2021. Banks create money from loans. The markets are high, but debts are even larger. The economy booms on borrowed money until you hit the Minsky moment. The bankers have loaded our economy up with their debt products, but we've seen the Minsky moment coming. Our economy is on the edge of the precipice, and the last thing we need is any more problems. The banks were using stock gains to maintain liquidity. Powell wants to keep those banks afloat. Ultimately stocks are just a part of that puzzle. I am still of the belief. The economy was toast in 2008, the last 11 years as a form of life support. Pulling the plug is the decision that's faced today. Trillions in debt to squeeze out a miserable 1.8% GDP growth. The juice ain't worth the squeeze. The US Manufacturing Weekly Hours Index has been plunging since mid-2019, now at some 40.40. And along comes the pandemic. China did what everyone else did, but saw that their economy had filled up with the bankers' debt products before it crashed. China claiming everything is under control is ludicrous. They'd never shave a few points of their GDP for the pandemic. The primary concern is not as much for the dead and dying from the new virus variants, as it is for the millions of people not working, not out shopping and not traveling, kind of cold-hearted but true. 400 million people were put under lockdown. That's more than the entire population of the US. Locked down, people can't produce or consume. Let's say 25% of the 400 million under lockdown are working age. That's 100 million people not going to work. China is an export and construction-based economy with a mountain of debt. Regional Chinese banks were already collapsing pre-virus. China is now on the precipice. On top of its domestic problems, China has a big problem with its other largest trade partner. The EU is China's largest trading partner, and China is the EU's second largest trade partner after the United States. However, the EU continues to slow down, as EU growth slowed to just plus 0.1% France's economy contracts by 0.1% in the last quarter. Italy is shrinking by 0.3%. German industrial production fell for the fifth time in the last seven months. According to the OECD, the German economy grew by 0.4% in 2020 and is expected to grow by 0.9% in 2021. German factory orders contracted 2.1% month on month. I cannot see a pathway towards China, reaching even recently reduced economic growth estimates for this year. I am stunned that any growth at all is predicted. There will be macro lessons of plenty about how rolling debt, supply chain disruptions, and severe drops in demand for commodities all interact globally. This thing will explode worldwide when you think it's over. The pandemic will succeed in destroying China and the global economy. This whole event is quite fortuitous for the US. The realization of just how vulnerable Chinese supply lines are, coupled with the poor quality and theft of IP, will cause everyone left there to leave. China's January trade data, due to be released today, will be delayed until next month. The long-awaited black swan is here. When these clowns realize they can't convince us that we are heading toward imminent recession, they will instead assert that we are actually in a recession. Mark my words. That's how desperate these mental patients have become. We are moving towards an economic Armageddon that will shake the world to its core. This observation is based on the fact the numbers simply don't work. Call it a multi-generational realignment if you wish, but in reality, it is the recognition that our path was an unsustainable illusion. The situation has become dire, and the numbers do not work. Borrowing money to pay the interest on past debt and negative interest rates merely is not a prescription that leads to economic nirvana and bliss. Welcome back to the Atlantis Report. You are here for your daily dose of the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Please take a second to hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to also hit the notification bell. Thank you.
Since 2008, China has been growing by adding more and more debt, but they can't do that anymore as they have seen the Minsky moment on the horizon. The last thing they needed was the pandemic. Three provinces, 60 cities, and 400 million people are now facing China's most strict level of lockdown, as Beijing struggled to contain the pandemic outbreak as the virus has already spread to more than two dozen countries. That's more than 400 million people forcibly locked inside their homes. Shutting down growth means disrupted supply chains. This could end with starvation and sickness. Said differently, COVID is not the only way that virus will kill. When you quarantine 400 million indefinitely in the highest manufacturing regions, you're pretty much toast. The financial markets are about to get monkey hammered, and this time the Fed can do nothing. The dominoes are going to start falling, and when they do, it's going to go fast once the algo circuit breakers trip, it is a race to the bottom. Even Goldman Sachs expects the pandemic to whack as much as 2% from global GDP in Q1, as a result of China's GDP growth sliding to 4% in, with China's economy now a quite material approximately 17% of the global economy. The collapse in economic contribution from Chinese tourism and trade, not to mention crippled supply chains. It is now widely accepted that as China sneezes the world will be impacted. Regardless of the supply chain disruption in China, which is significant. Although in recent weeks, equity and bond markets gave up some of their gains as uncertainty about the economic effects of the new virus variants weighed on investors' sentiment. The markets are still high, but debts are even higher. The banks are now getting direct injections on a daily basis via Fed repos. These idiots are printing billions a day, and it's going straight into the indexes. Powell has the balls even to say this when he and the rest of his whores are the ones jacking the markets. Since September 17, 2019, the New York Fed, with full awareness from Chairman Powell, has funneled more than $6.6 trillion in revolving loans to the trading houses of Wall Street with no vote in Congress and no disclosures as to what firms are receiving this money and why. The Federal Reserve continues to make the U.S. elite super rich richer and richer and even more powerful while the middle class worldwide gets poorer and poorer and disappears. The scheme, or better known as, the Ponzi scheme. The U.S. elite super rich is delighted with the Federal Reserve. Jamie Dimon knows exactly what he wants. J.P. Morgan Chase has been fingered as the bank that contributed to the Federal Reserve having to intervene in the overnight loan market on September 17, 2019, and every business day ever since. The Fed, through its money spigot, the New York Fed, has flooded Wall Street's trading houses with hundreds of billions of dollars weekly in cheap loans over the past three months. That cheap, pre-announced source of liquidity has not only caused the stock market to set multiple new historic highs but has caused the stock of JP Morgan Chase to set multiple new historic highs as well. Jamie Dimon the chairman and CEO of JP Morgan Chase admitted on his quarterly earnings call with analysts that his bank had backed away from lending on September 17. That backing away contributed to the overnight lending rate spiking from an average of about 2% to 10% on September 17. That rate spike was used by the Federal Reserve to justify its interventions. The first of their kind since the financial crisis. Getting all their ducks, excuses in a row before things crash, it would appear. Priming the masses with their defense arguments for piling on debt instead of paying it down when they should have. When it all does come crashing down due to the unsustainable debt that never blinked while it kept rising. I wonder if Fed and its cronies will also remind people that the big idea of taking on that more debt and a 4% plus growth that would magically pay down the debt. How will they explain that they failed to achieve either of these things and instead, simply saddled the younger generations with mountains more in debt and decades of misery? Never let a crisis go to waste, always an excuse to devalue the people's savings and prop up big government with artificially low interest rates, soon to be negative. When borrowing stops, creating money stops. It's a fractional reserve system. A slow down refers to the speed at which money changes hands. QE money is cheap money loaned to connected institutions and parties that then loan out that money or so the story goes. Most of QE money is used to prop up an asset's price by manipulating supply and demand. QE money never reaches the street. Only the price increases that are symptomatic of supply and demand manipulation. Real loans need collateral, but derivatives and hypothecated commodities used as collateral mean the loans on which QE is based are really just liar loans. When debt defaults, the money disappears. 
The joke of this whole financial thing is that the Congress, the Fed, the big banks, and all of Wall Street know exactly what's coming. As the dollar continues its path into the dustbin of history, as the world is rejecting it more and more as each month goes by. Yet no one has the balls to speak the truth about where we are heading as a result of all of this printing, which is now going vertical in the end game scenario. There's going to be mass starvation as food runs out. Other diseases will emerge as bodies overwhelm disposal. We are in uncharted waters. Data, charts, etc. mean f all anymore. There is no market, only printing and the resultant bubble. When it pops is anyone's guess, but I'm willing to bet most will be insolvent by the time it does. Our call at the Atlantis report remains that one should expect a US recession before 2025. After that, the greatest depression and probably even World War III. This was the Atlantis report. Please like. Share. Leave me a comment. Subscribe. And please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you wholeheartedly to all those of you who have already donated. Stay safe and healthy friends.